you thought that high altitude bake, baking uh, talk was going to be about the pot field they found up at Raymond, didn't you? Hey, I'm Joel Gratz. You may wonder why I'm wearing a question mark coat. Uh, why? Because we're talking about an uncertain future. Actually, I'm just recycling an old Halloween outfit from Matthew Leskow, the guy who gives away the government's money. That's not important. So, all these people, and I'm a meteorologist, so I'm slanted, predict the future, but which one would you trust? An entrepreneur, a stockbroker, an economist, a sports analyst, a politician, or a meteorologist? Well, how would you decide between all of those people? You could tweet, you could, you could meditate. If I saw her meditating, I would do whatever she told me to do. Uh, F would write a song about it, which I would follow. Or we could be a little more scientific. And this actually came from a book. I read one. This is when you rely on predictions. When the past skill is known, you have experience using the prediction. It's just for a short term and the outcomes are constrained. Yes or no, one or zero, not one or a million. So let's get to it. An entrepreneur, would you trust them? No. Look at these revenue curves. Would those ever work in real life? Absolutely not. So we're probably going to, I mean, I'm trying to start a business too, but I don't think I would trust my revenue forecast. Stockbroker, Gordon Gecko, would you trust him? No. You might know their past skill. You might have some experience with them, but the outcomes are not constrained. You can lose a million. You can make a million. Anywhere in between, I wouldn't trust their prediction. Even worse, The Economist, Alan Greenspan, whoops, you know, hey, you never know. The outcomes are far from constrained, far from constrained. So to illustrate that point, I think economists, no offense to those of you out there, are no better at predicting things than monkeys. So this was a study where a bunch of economists had an error of a 1% predicting future GDP, which would have been the same as if you just said, next year will be the same as this year. So no mu not much skill. One more economist bashing slide. In 2006, they interviewed a bunch and they said, nah, not going to be a very good year. What happened? It was a blockbuster year. Now, to be fair, the blockbuster came because there was a big scam from bond analysts, but we're not going to go there. Sports analysts, would you trust John Madden? Well, yeah, because you know how easy it is to say the team that win scores the most points will win the game. <laughs> Maybe you would trust him, I don't know. A politician. Now, I would usually say we wouldn't trust them, but some websites are now keeping track of their promises and how well they're doing, which is actually pretty interesting. However, I don't think I can trust a group of people that let somebody like this in. Hank Johnson said in April of this year, my fear is that the island of Guam will become so overly populated that it will tip over and capsize. Honest to God, go on YouTube and look at it. I, that loses trust with me immediately. So who are we left with? We're left with beautiful meteorologists. And if I look like that, I would likely be on television as well. However, it's good to be here. So meteorologists have actually done an amazing job over the last 40 years of doing uh, what they do best, which is predicting the weather. Over the last 40 years, we've actually done 40% better, this is true, uh, in our high temperature predictions. And that's not all, because you're like, yeah, high temperature, not that big of a deal. Over the last 40 years, we've actually improved our hurricane forecast by 75%. Think about another field that's improved something by 75% in only 40 years. Now, never mind the fact we said Hurricane Earl was going to miss North Carolina, and right now they're getting pounded, but generally, we're very good. But you say, Joel, I can't trust meteorologists. And I say, why not? And you say, I don't even understand what 40% chance of rain means. And to that I say, it's after intermission, you've had too many beers, see me afterwards and we'll talk about it. It is pretty confusing. But what meteorologists can do really well is you can give personal forecasts. So I was with this crew, Michael and Matt Moniz, over the summer. They were raising money and doing so by hiking to the highest point in each of the 50 states. And they were trying to break the record. And they brought me along, not because of my hiking skill, but because I tried to keep them out of trouble. And I was actually 98% right. I almost killed them on Mount Rainier, but otherwise they were able to, to, to uh, set a new world record and raise a bunch of money. The world record was 43 days to get the highest point of each state. So entrepreneur, stockbroker, economist, sports analyst, politician, I say you choose meteorologists, but you know what? If you don't need to make a prediction or you don't have somebody to help you with a prediction, maybe you can just deal with the consequences.
So in a, aside from having a meteorologist, if one of us isn't around, you take Jack Bauer or you take MacGyver with his mullet and his aviators, and he will get you out of any trouble that you ever face. So just remember, you don't always need to make predictions, but if you do, rely on a meteorologist. I find you powder days on Colorado Powder Forecast. Keep you safe from lightning and don't get zapped. Thanks very much. Have a great night.